Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for tuning in with Dr. Leisha, the preacher. Okay. I don't know why I'm holding the camera this way. Well, anyway, I'm holding it this way now. So, anyway, um, I'm getting ready to go downstairs to preach soon. And I wanted to address two things in a quick video before I go downstairs to preach. And I didn't make it to get my nails done yet. The Lord is getting on me. He's getting on me about making sure my nails and hair and stuff is done. And I'm like, Lord, I want to obey you, but I need some help. Please send me a makeup team. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but anyway. So, um, we're studying out of Exodus. Okay. Exodus chapter 1. And you may say, you know, yes, the Lord called you, but what experience do you have on this earth? You know what I'm saying? Because now that we're in Exodus chapter 1, you know, you need some type of military strategy. You know, some type of military mindset or something. You know what I mean? I have never enlisted in the military. Thank the Lord. You know, thank the Lord I never enlisted. I considered it because when I was coming up, either you were going to go to college, go to the military, work for your family business if you have one, or go get a job for somebody else's family. And that was it. Somebody else's family means any company business that is not a company or business within your own family. Those were the options. So I grew up working for my family. My family owned property even though they worked other jobs, like for the big three and all that. But we still owned like, you know, gas stations, auto um, repair shops. Um, you know, things like that, <clears throat> plumbing companies, whatever. So I grew up experiencing both worlds as a child. So that's how I chose to raise my children as well, to experience both worlds. But as far as my military experience, my first husband was a Marine. And he also served in a war in Operation Desert Storm in the 90s. Okay, I was pregnant with our first child when he went off to war. Okay. And that experience led to our divorce ultimately. Not that experience alone, but it had a very... Uh, great impact on our divorce and that divorce was um, authorized um, by the Lord in our hearts it also was authorized by our pastor we could not divorce without the authorization of our pastor and that was granted okay under the religion we were under at this point in my life, I am a believer only. A believer only that is led by the Holy Spirit. Who is walking in the calling, purpose, and I am chosen, okay, to do what I'm doing. Alright, so, so we were married five and a half years. We dated uh, two years. So for seven and five, for seven and a half years, I was married to someone in the military. Prior to him, I was not legally married to this young man, but for two years of my life, I was married to, uh, uh, um, you know, dating to me, married to, but just not legally, 
to someone for two years, that young man. And he was a Marine as well. Okay, so that's nine and a half of, you know, military uh, Marine experience. And then in my own family, all my uncles pretty much were in the army or something, you know. So, you know, I come from uh, a generation of being exposed to military men. So, you know, and I dated married military men. Okay, so that was my first husband. So my first husband kind of gives me the energy feel of like, um, like the movie Glory and Soldier Story with Denzel Washington kind of energy. And then my second husband, he was not military, but he was highly intelligent. Highly intelligent. And probably more spiritual than anyone knew but me. <laughs> Perhaps his mom. Mothers be knowing that stuff too. I'm just saying. But anyway, um, but he was like Urkel. He was my Urkel. I had my Denzel in the first marriage, and then I had my Urkel <laughs> in the second marriage. <laughs> but my Urkel turned into Stefan, y'all. Okay, when Urkel turned into Stefan, what do you do with that? Okay, <laughs> but anyway, I just want to let y'all know as we study Exodus, following the children of Israel, where one generation dies off, Joseph, who lived in Egypt who had authority and influence, is gone now. And this new king and these new people, they don't really have any respect for Joseph. They don't really know him like that. So we have at least 70 members of the 12 tribes of Israel in Egypt without any real covering these people don't know their ancestors. These people don't know their history. They don't know the wilderness. They don't know that they were once slaves and delivered. They may have heard some stuff, just like today in America. In America, no one cares, including most of us that look like us, don't care that we have a history of being slaves, that our ancestors were shipped here like my ancestor, Kudjo Lewis, was shipped here on a slave ship. <clears throat> His slave ship was brought here illegally, though. It was illegal. That's why they burnt it. They burnt it. Right after the slaves and all the cargo and the, um, you know, those on the boat, after they were off, they burnt it. And just a few years ago, they recovered some of the uh, wreckage. Mm -hmm. Check our history, y'all. But anyway, so... You know, I have experience and passion and motivation and birthrights, inheritance. Right here in America. So, here we are. Just like those 70 children of the tribe of Israel, we're just like them right now. These people don't really know us. We've been living among them, and they really don't know us. They don't know the history. They're erasing it. 
And just because someone that kind of looked like us was in the White House, just because a few people may have had, you know, a mixture of our blood, and they appear to look like us on the outside. Remember I said, don't judge a book by its cover. We don't do that in the tribes. Skin tone is not enough. You gotta have the blood. You gotta have the calling. You gotta be chosen. You have to be of the tribe. So just because someone kind of looked like us up in there, you know, don't mean that they are us. Don't mean they're us just because they look like us. We're in Egypt, y'all. We're in America. We're in Egypt. We're in America. And they don't remember Joseph. They don't remember Cudjo Lewis. They don't remember our ancestors that came across the water and that were slaves. We don't even remember them. We're just waking up. We're just realizing that we are on a turtle island. Egypt, America, a melting pot mixed up of everybody. But yet, we are still scattered all over this earth. And we can't forget that. We are scattered everywhere, the 12 tribes of Israel. And just as we are scattered, guess what? We're going to be gathered again. Wherever we are on this earth, we're going to be gathered again. It's going to be a slow process, a slow process. But we shall come together again, just like the body of Christ. The body of Christ has a head, it has shoulders, you know, it has a stomach, it has legs, you know, arms, feet. The body was dismembered in Judges 19, the concubine. She was the Bethlehem Judah, the Bethlehem Judah concubine. She was the wife of a priest the wife of a priest who was murdered by his own hands, dismembered and scattered all over to the 12 tribes of Israel, though, not just anywhere, <laughs> within the tribe. Just, that, just like that body was scattered, that body has to come back together. Dinah, Dinah's nation was destroyed by her brothers, by her the hands of her own brothers, even though her father had fixed things. The kids would go sometimes and <laughs> mess up the things that, you know, the parents settle. The kids want to, you know, raise their own wars. We're in Egypt. We have to survive here. And they're trying to gather us up not for our benefit not for the benefit of the kingdom they're trying to gather us up for their benefit they know this gathering has happened <laughs> they read the same bible we read they they read the same other you know sources that we read the quran and torah and whatever else is out there that we read they read it too they see what's happening they know we're gathering and they're preparing for this gathering <laughs> just like in Egypt they know us well enough to see what's happening they see us being fruitful making money you know being educated you know having homes they've allowed it they've allowed it just like jo through Joseph's influence just like our you know ancestors influence 
they've allowed us to, you know, achieve some things, you know. Now they're about to gather us, reclaim things, make us continue to work hard for them. You know, it's a vicious cycle that keeps happening and it becomes more and more modern. The more modern it becomes, the, the less we recognize what's really going on. But anyway, I'm preparing for the sermon um, coming out of uh, Exodus chapter 1. Stay tuned. In addition, we're also solving, um, you know, mysteries. Some mysteries are through Atlantic letters, you know, and or Atlant Atlantic letters. Atlanta letters. And then the other um, mystery is the Detroit murder. And all this is linked to strawberries. <laughs> God is so good. God is so good. So anyway, um, you know, continue to, to uh, watch how the Lord work in my life. That's the only way I can describe this. This is the Lord working in my life. And you're welcome to watch him. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you, YouTube. Thank you, YouTube, for allowing this platform uh, it's free as long as I pay my bills. <laughs> as long as I as long as I pay my bills, this platform is free for me to use. I'm not monetized. I'm not even sure if I want to be. But to even make that decision, I need 1,000 subscribers. Help me get there. Help me. Uh, solve these mysteries help me continue to uh, allow the Lord to shine in my life the way he do it in his own unique way I'm just obeying God you know all right so pray for me as I get ready for the word and um, and I'm considering continuing to deliver the word the way I did last week speaking from uh, a podium or from my my altar podium I think I'm going to continue because I really do believe in the tradition of uh, the men of the tribe speaking from the podium there's something about the men of the tribe speaking from the you know pastor pulpit podium stand you know, from there. I want to continue and honor that tradition. Have I spoken from a pulpit before? Yes, I, I did in Florida. I did that in Florida. <clears throat> and, um, you know, but within Dr. Leisha, the preacher ministries, I believe I want to separate the podiums. I believe the main one should be for the, the head, the lead, and then there should be another um, one for women. You know, uh, the, 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 maybe the, 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 the men's podium should be raised just a little bit, or, you know, it's, there should be some, some distinction. But the chairs, it's okay for the chairs to be side by side, you know? But when it comes to speaking on behalf of the Lord, the Lord does make a distinction. He makes that distinction. I have no reason to be offended by it. <laughs> but I do want to make that distinction between how the male, uh, masculine, uh, husband, you know, men speak, you know, their podium should be different than from, you know, the stand, the podium, the perspective, the view, the, you know, testimony of women. Just think about that, you know, as I consider that as well. So just pray for me as I pray for you.
you know. And the reason why I want to pray for you because I am told in the scriptures to treat you and love you as well as I do my own self. That's the least I can do. If I do more, if I do less, then I'm probably cheating God. And I don't want to be in debt with the Lord. Because I owe him everything. All my mind. All my heart. All my strength. All my body. I owe him, I owe him everything. He is my first love. He is my husband. My first husband. Anybody else come second to him. Anybody else is a second husband. Anybody else is, you know, after him. It is what it is. <laughs> So we're all in the first wives clubs, if we believe. <laughs> I'm in the first wives club, <laughs> in heaven and on earth. <laughs> so I'm just saying, you know, um, you know, God is good. Click like, subscribe, share my videos, help me get to 1,000 subscribers, okay? And um, send donations, okay? I don't believe my ministry will get off into tithe just yet not yet i need to do me more research on the pulpit women speaking from the same pulpit as men you know what i'm saying i need to do me more research on women speaking from the same pulpit or separate pulpits and i want to do more research on tithing but for now dr alicia the preacher want to live off of your donation from god it only have to be donations from God through your heart. And hit my cash app like that. That's the only way. That's the only way. So, otherwise, your tithing is watching me and learning, making comments. I'm going to try to go through all my videos and have it where my comments are being withheld for my review. And then if it goes through my, you know, approval, then I'll release it to the public. Otherwise, I'll just hold it for me. Because some stuff is just meant for me. Maybe the Lord is speaking to you. No, no. Speaking to me. <laughs> speaking to me through you in the comment section. How else can you get to me? I'm not going live yet. You can email me. You can email me. Put something in the comment section. I'm going to hold those for my review, you know. Some I'll release to the public. Others will just be for me. And the ones that are held for me, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Between me, you, and the Lord, I don't know. Because we're all in this marriage together. We're all married. I mean, <laughs> I know it's not laws and stuff involved and all that. But we're all married. We're all the same bride getting ready for the same husband. We're all the same bride. You know, that's why I need my makeup crew. You know, I'm not good with makeup, so somebody in this bride area must be good with makeup. <laughs> you know, as I grow, I'm gonna need a travel team. As I grow, I'm gonna need a security team. As I grow, I'm gonna need all these teams and how I know is because I've experienced all this stuff before you know I haven't always been broke down and discarded in living in the projects I haven't always lived that way <laughs> I have lived I have I have been in commercials <laughs> you know what I mean well at least one major one and I have been in um, you know I have danced and I, you know, for a famous poet. I've danced for a famous poet. I've danced on TV. I've done a lot of other stuff in my past. And those things are treasures from the past that I can open up that treasure box and dust that stuff off and use it to move forward. And you guys are my witnesses. You guys are watching the Lord transition me using past treasures, present liberties as I launch into my future. Through him, though. 
I'm with him. You are my witness. I'm a, I'm a living a, a living epistle. We're all, we all are living epistles. We are all <clears throat> volumes, chapters, paragraphs, down to the letter in these type of books. Not just this book, many other books out there. I'm in the process of writing my own books, plural. And I'm using this YouTube, free YouTube, to help me organize my books, organize my TV shows, organize my movies. Y'all watching me organize my own entertainment industry. I'm recruiting my own talent. Y'all watching all this. Y'all a witness to what God can do. And there's no limitation. It don't matter if I'm sick. It don't matter if I'm poor. It don't matter if I'm rich. It don't matter if I'm wealthy. It don't matter what I am. God used me. And I obey him. Some days I look good. Some days I look bad. It is what it is. Okay? I love you guys. Be blessed. <laughs> oh, my cash app is dollar sign. Dr. Alicia the Preacher. Otherwise, I work part-time as a temporary employee. I've been doing this for 11 years for the Lord. Um, you know, people have taken me into their homes as I have traveled over the past 11 years for his ministry. People have taken me, taken me into their homes. Sometimes I'll look like their goddaughter. Sometimes I'll look like their girlfriend. Sometimes I look like, I don't know what I be looking like out there. <laughs> you know, just crashing with people doing God's work. <laughs> I have even checked myself into, you know, rehabilitation centers, you know, because y'all, you know, y'all have watched me on YouTube, you know, I've smoked weed and stuff and not other stuff, but, you know, I don't really have like substance abuse issues but I've had some times where my depression was so heavy where you know I was um I checked myself in rehab along with my children they were going through rehab you know whether it was you know alcohol drug other drugs you know a, a depression addiction uh issues and stuff can be, um, you know, learned family behaviors, trying to cope with similar issues and problems. These 70 people from the tribe of Israel that entered into Egypt, all they had was each other. They fought sometimes. They stabbed each other in the back sometimes. But all they had each other and they multiplied those 70 people kept just kept growing and growing and growing to the point where they became a threat we are now a threat and we're almost at the point where we can't leave America now the walls are up they're going up and we're trapped here some of us got out and some of us chose to stay I chose to stay I got out there and looked around enough I didn't have to go far <laughs> but I looked around enough in the world I traveled enough outside of you know I have a passport so I traveled out there enough to know that I want to be here Because God want me to be. He want me to travel domestically. Like I've been doing for the past 11 years. Since, what, uh, the summer, the summer of 2012. I left Michigan and drove down to Atlanta, Georgia. And Dr. Leisha, the preacher, 
has been, you know, on the rise ever since, seeking higher ground ever since. Mm -hmm. So I will continue domestically to travel. And those of you who, you know, want to continue to follow me internationally, because I know there are people like in India that follow me, but more people here in America are following me. When I first started, the people in India were watching me more. But now the people in America are watching. And that's fine. So, you know, international, you can watch me online. But as far as traveling, you know, speaking at conferences and all that that's coming in my future, it'll be domestic. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I love you guys. Pray for me as I pray for you. God is great and greatly to be praised. All right.